Hey, this is Sky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Go check out my website at skyazrael.com. Let's talk about single mothers. Why aren't there more men dating single mothers? Now, I've had to ask myself this question. I have never once ever in my life, and I've dated a lot of women, I've never once dated a single mother. Never once. I have avoided them like the plague. And a lot of other men are like that. Well, why? This video might be helpful to some guys out there who are lonely and who are wondering about relationships and should I get involved with a single mother. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I like to propose that it's worth being open-minded towards it. I have changed my position on this after many, many decades of being vehemently against it. I am not messing with a kid with a chick, uh, with a chick with a kid. No thank you, honey. But in the last couple years, I have completely switched and I have realized that actually I would probably really enjoy that. It would be an instant family and I mean I'm not targeting, I'm not looking for women with kids. I am single and I would like to be in a relationship but if she has a kid I'm not going to avoid her anymore. But let's go over some of these reasons why men, men like myself, have avoided single moms and for the single moms out there watching maybe this might help you understand what's going on with some men. I'm not here to defend men or defend these positions. I just want to hash this out with you guys. And guys, you can maybe get a little introspective and to do some self, you know, uh, diagnostics so you can look into your own mind and start thinking about your own patterns and your own judgments and your own wants and needs. And if you are single and if you're lonely, maybe having this new perspective, this open-minded perspective might increase your chances of finding a mate. So let's just go over it. Number one, the first problem that a lot of men have with dating single women or, uh, excuse me, single mothers or getting into marriages with women who are single mothers is because they don't want to raise another man's kid. And I know what that it feels like to, to meet somebody who has a kid and to instantly think, uh-uh, I don't want to raise some other dude's kid. That's not my kid. That, that's some other motherfucker's kid. Now the only thing that pops up in my head when I think about that, this aversion to wanting to raise somebody else's kid, is that I was raised in a household with a single mother. I was not raised by my father. I got to know my father later in life, but I was not raised by him. He wasn't in the house. I was raised by a single mother, and I would have been a different person. I don't regret who I am, but I would have been a different person if I would have had a father in the house. I joined a gang at age 10, and it was a big gang. There was lots of other little boys. I wasn't the only 10-year-old. There was a whole baby gang that you know, it was like a, a, a nursery gang, <laughs> 10 year olds and 15 year olds and 12 year olds. And then there was an older gang. Every single person involved in that organization, I mean, almost everyone came from a broken home. You wanna know who joins gangs? Kids from broken homes. So when I think about my own childhood and how I desperately needed a father to guide me to mentor me, or any man, not just my father, but any man. I didn't have any man in my life, none. There were no men in my life, none. I was surrounded by women, raised by women. And my brother, we became parents to each other, fathers to each other, because we had no father. When I think about this in my past like that, of being in a house with no father, that I realized, wow, I could be that man for some kid who needs me. I could save not just one life, the life of a little, possibly a little boy or a little girl and keep them from turning into a gang member or a stripper, but I could save the life of a woman who desperately needs a good guy to be at her side. So this leads me to the next one. There's a strong criticism of a, a fear, let's call it a fear because I really do think that this is largely fear-based. When I think about myself and why I have avoided single moms, I, I can trace it back to a fear. We only have fear or love. So you can keep going to the thought that sponsors the thought, and you'll eventually end at either fear or love. There's this fear that single moms are looking to make 
men ATM machines, that they're really just gold diggers. And that you're going to get into this relationship and it's going to be expensive and taxing and boring and that you're going to be mowing lawns and paying phone bills and all that kind of stuff, fixing faucets. When all you just wanted was a relationship, you just wanted a companion, you wanted companionship, you didn't need a job, you got a job. And that might bring you back to another one. The second one might bring you back to the first one. And you, you're hooked up with this gold digger who thinks you are, you're an ATM machine, she's putting you to work all the time. And you just think, man, why am I even doing this for some other motherfucker's kid? This is what that motherfucker should be doing. And you get bitter and resentful, wonder why you're even in the relationship. And a lot of people like myself have, have avoided single mothers altogether. Just in, I'm not going to even try it because I know that you're going to be expensive. I don't have money for you. Sorry. Now, when I think of this, the second one, this ATM machine syndrome, I have to interject into my own head the role of manhood. Men are tasked with a certain role of protector, provider, priest, and prophet. You may be able to think of others. I just like peas, and those are the ones that came off the top of my head. But that's basically our role as, as a man. We protect our women, we provide our women, we uh, offer guidance. When I say prophet, I mean like, like a shepherd. We guide them. Prophets always have followers. We guide their, our women. And, and we're a, a spiritual leader. We're the priest. We're the pastor. We're the preacher. We uphold the moral values and character of the family. And When I think about this ATM machine idea of being just with this gold digger. I realize that as a man, you do have a, a role of providing and protecting, of carrying wood and carrying water and bringing home the, the, the dead animal from the hunt. You know, this goes back thousands and thousands of years. This is why she has you around. It's not just a dick. She'd go buy a dildo. They got vibrating, fresh-feeling dildos where and they can suction cup them through the wall. She don't really need you. They even have dildos that can squirt out liquid. They, she really doesn't need you. Pretty soon they'll have sex robots. And she really won't need you for, for just for your dick. She needs you to take care of her. So let's move on to the next one. There's this insecurity, fear, this aversion of being the third wheel forever. And I kind of know what that is like. Not that I've dated a woman with children, but I've met many women with children who've liked me and I've always avoided them because of some of these reasons. And I don't want to be the third wheel forever. I know the relationship. It's you and your kid against the world. That's every single mom's mentality. It's me and my son, me and my daughter against the world. You come second or third or whatever. My kid comes first. You're going to come after that. It's always going to be them. You're never going to be put first. And in fact, it creates this weird power struggle to where, and I watched this with my mom's boyfriends, that they were in competition with me over my mom's love. And it's very inappropriate. It's a very weak man who does this. And it's a very ignorant man who thinks this because you misunderstand the love. And that's the only thing I can interject on that third wheel syndrome is that you're misunderstanding, and my, myself included, I was misunderstanding the type of love. The type of love that a woman has with her child is different than the type of love that she has with her man. The type of love that you have with your child, if you have kids, men out there, if you have kids, the type of love you have for your son is different than the type of love that you have for your mother, or excuse me, for your wife. <laughs> well, edible slip there. You're not having kids with your mother. That's a different channel. You know, side note, it's funny I brought that up. That's the most heavily searched keyword on Pornhub.com. I know the owner of Pornhub. I used to do business with him not with pornography <laughs> it was he owned a nightclub but uh it, it's the most heavily searched term is incest porn mommy and young boy that's what everybody wants to see is mom's getting fucked it's so weird but there's this third wheel syndrome and you need to get over it and You're her man. You're her desire. You're her leader. 
her provider. You're her king. So as long as you understand your role, you don't get lost in that competition. The, the next one is this crazy ex-husband notion. And I know what that's like to have a question about that. I've been approached by some women who have ex-husbands who are in prison and they're connected to gangs or mobs and they might be enemies of mine. <laughs> and it's just like, well, wait a minute. I mean, this is not a good scenario. There's the fear that he's going to show up on the doorstep unannounced, drunk, ranting and raving, violent, aggressive, wondering why you stole his family. You stole my family. <laughs> Even if you're a tough guy like me, look, I'm not scared of people. I'm not scared. I don't care who you are. I'm not scared of you. I don't care if you're Mike Tyson and you got tattoos on your face. You think you're a badass. I turn your lights out like that. I'm not scared of other men. I break you in half, motherfucker. I'm not scared of you. But I don't need that hassle with that shit. Ugh, who wants to go through that? I'm not trying to go to prison for some chick. Go handle your business. And that fear can be solved in two ways. One, you can be as confident as I am. Be confident in your abilities. Never be scared of another man ever. Ever. Never be scared of another man ever. But become good at courtship and mate selection. So you learn about a chick in that courtship process. Instead of just fucking her, you're learning about her. No, I don't want to bang you out tonight and Netflix and chill. Let's turn Netflix off and let's talk for three or four hours. There goes a date for you about in intimacy. You think you're sex and you're, you're, you're eating her out all night? That's not really intimacy if you don't know her. That's almost just masturbation. You're just getting your rocks off. It's a self-serving. You're just looking so you can come and feel good and sit back and be like, ah, I feel like a man. You might as well just be masturbating. You're not trying to give somebody any, any pleasure. When, you, when you're going to sex, giving pleasure, that's love, man. You, I want to make you come seven times, honey, because I love you. And you only get to a point like that when you have that mental connection. So these are just some things to get over. I don't know if I convinced anybody in this video, but I'm not really trying to. It's just all food for thought. Thanks for watching.